in light of the seriousness and the lateness of the hour, I, Edin Achman at Beit have decided I need to get some more materials out there to help the people position themselves for the transition we are going through in the replacement of the present world order with a new era. Doing what is right in our own eyes. The revival of the use of the name of the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is one of the cornerstones of the life of future, the future church and the future earth. His name will be restored to all aspects and areas of life. It will be used as it was in the times of Abraham to the exile in Babylon and with Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi and then with its restoration under John the Baptist and Yehoshua or Jesus son of the living God. The main difference in the ultimate revival is that it will be forever. Even as the name Yahuwah is the name forever and it will be from generation to, genera to generation at least for the next 850 generations until we reach the thousandth generation in the generation after Yeshua son of Nun or Joshua son of Nun a generation of ignorance arose and we may ask about what were they ignorant and the scriptures tell us in judges and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers and there arose another generation after them which knew not Yahweh, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel it was a generation ignorant of Yahweh and the works that he did. They then went and served the masters, that is the Baalim, and the Ashtaroth, and provoked Yahuwah to act anger. And as a result of this, Yahuwah made a decree. Because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also henceforth will not drive out from before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel, whether they will keep, that is, guard the way of Yahuwah, to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it, or not. So the Israeli takeover in the land was not complete. We may ask the question, did the church's history have any parallel to this? Is it possible that even in the community of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, that in the generation of Yeshua and the apostles, they knew Yahuwah and his name, but an apostasy occurred in the following generations, in the following generations, this is not to say that Yahuwah left himself without witness. For even in the case of Israel, he raised up judges who would rescue the people from their enemies and oppressors. And when he raised up judges, he was with them to judge and deliver. And when he raised up judges, he was with them to judge and deliver. Yahuwah has always raised up saints in the church who have defended the faith and their words with their words and prayers. He has raised up many deliverers. Apostle Paul explained that there would be a great apostasy in the church until the apostasy occurred, Yeshua would not return. Let no man deceive you by any means, for except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you 
of these things. And now you know that what that which withholder is holding is withholding until he might be revealed, so that he might be revealed in his time. For the secret of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahuwah shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. There will be an apostasy headed by a man who makes himself out to be Elohim. Yeshua will deal with him, Jesus Yeshua will deal with him firstly by the Spirit which will issue forth from his mouth which may be considered those who prophesy even as Yahuwah said to Moses he would be with his mouth. It is words which the Spirit wields as its sword for the word of Yahuwah is the sword of the Spirit. This warfare will be headed up by Yah, Yeshua, that is the Lord Jesus, sending forth his voice by the mouth of the charismatic prophets. Halloween. Finally, the complete destruction of the apostasy and of the body, for the man of sin has a body, even as Yeshua has a body, will take place when he comes and that great light shines throughout the earth and is the manifestation of the saints of El Elyon, the manifestations of the saints of God Most High. So the church expected times of ignorance, times of deception, times of the wearing out, wearing out of the saints. And the church expected a battle against apostasy to occur by two means. The first by the Spirit, and the second by the coming. The mouth of Jesus on earth is located in the body, the church. For he says, he who hears me, sorry, he who hears you, hears me. And he says, Surely I will be with you, even to the end of the age. And the mouth of Jesus speaks truth and righteousness. And, and on prophecy as to what the mouth of Jesus will speak, one prophecy as to what the mouth of Jesus will speak, is recorded in Psalm 22. The psalm quoted by Jesus on the cross. According to the psalm, one of Jesus resurrection declarations will be the name Yahweh. The first thing Jesus does after his deliverance in the psalm is to declare the name Yahweh to his little brother and then the, to his little brothers. And then the psalm moves forward until the consummation of the whole earth in the glory of Yahweh. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation I will praise thee. Ye that fear Yahweh, praise him. The Spirit comes from the mouth in the form of words. The sword of the Spirit, which he uses to nullify the actions of the evil one, is the word of Yahuwah. We then have two stages. We then have two stages in the church after the deliverance of Jesus or Yeshua. Firstly, the declaration of the name Yahuwah. It is not to be hidden but declared not covered in substitutes but spoken and glorified and the second is having declared the name those who fear him who is declared even Yahuwah 
praise him. Who then are the ones who fear Yahweh? It is the church from all nations. Jacob in this psalm is told to glorify him and Israel to fear him. But there is a group of people who are fearing Yahweh already in Psalm 20, the psalm in the 23rd verse. The seed of Israel follow and do not precede this group. Someone will say that we have in the church, what we have in the church is perfect. Each community is free to use whatever name or titles is right in their own eyes. And I would answer that this indeed is what has happened in the history of the church up until today. And I would agree that Yahqua, the one who was and is and will be the Almighty, has indeed permitted this to be the case. Not only that, but the New Testament precedent of using the Greek Septuagint text as scripture also sanctions the fact that every community was permitted to do what was right in their own eyes in regard to the name Yahweh. And this has been right. Maybe. Looking back at this now, I'm not absolutely sure of that because actually it's quite possible that the earliest subjugant had the name Yahweh in it. Hallelujah. The earliest uh, subjugant text had the name Yahweh in it and it was later moved out. But I won't go in that. I wrote this before that. Before I knew about that. However, I would say this corresponds to a period of history in a period in the history of Israel. Indeed, it corresponds to perhaps more than one phase in the history of Israel. The people of Israel were in the wilderness, wandering around. Whilst they were wandering, they used to offer sacrifices wherever they pleased, for there was no set place to seek Yahweh. One day Moses was revealing this, the Hakim and the Mishpatim, the, the statutes and judgments, which Yahweh had taught him regarding places of worship or places to seek Yahweh. However, these statutes were dealing with the time when they reached the promised land and when they had come to rest. There were many places which had been used for the service of other deities with different names to Yahweh from whom all things come. And perhaps Israel was pondering the question, is it okay to build a sanctuary for the name Yahweh, the one who was and is and is to come, on the places where other nations had sought their deities? The church communities perhaps in different nations when deciding which name to substitute for the name Yahweh, the one who will call all things to be, considered a similar issue. Which name in our language has been used for the highest of the gods? And perhaps the particular communities, whether Germanic, who chose God or had, or, or had Hara, the Latin, who chose Deus or, or Signor, or the Greeks, who chose Theos and Curia, or the Arabs, who chose Illa and Allah, or El Rab, or the Aramaic, who chose Alaha and Mare. Each chose the appropriate each choice chose the appropriate word which was right in the eyes of the community at that time. Th this settles, they settled on names which had been assigned in the past either to the head of a pantheon, pantheon of Elohim, like Zeus, was it Olympus, and then when they translated the Bible, put the name, that name, instead of some form of the name Yahweh. They used the equivalent of Lord, Har. When Yahweh appeared in the text alone, they used the equivalent of God. When Yahweh appeared next to Adonai in the text for Adonai, meant Lord, or Har, or Elrab. I'll read that again because it wasn't clear to me, so how on earth is going to be clear to you, I have no idea. Let's do that. They settled on names which had been assigned in the past either to the head of the pantheon of Elohim, like Zeus was at Olympus. And then when they translated the Bible, put that name instead of some form of the name Yahweh. They used 
Instead of the name Yahweh, they use the equivalent of Lord. For example, Hara. 